In the name of Allah, the beneficent and merciful, to whom all praise is due, and I forever thank Allah for our leader and teacher, Messenger Elijah Muhammad, the last of all of the messengers to we so-called Negroes in the Western Hemisphere. I thank Allah for him, and I thank Allah for you to be present here today since that we are small in number of people being present, but someday they will. Brothers and sisters, I am not here to teach you today or uh, either to uh, talk, no, uh, talk long talk with you. I came because I was asked to give you the greetings and uh, that's why I'm actually here on that account and being late of getting here. I just came. Um, Minister Hasty sends the greetings of I Salaam Alaikum and uh, Brother Vesta in California and brothers in New York and brothers in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and people from the Iowa, Michigan jail, and from Jackson, Michigan jail, they all send the greetings of I Salaam Alaikum to you. Thank you. Now, brothers and sisters, as I said, of greatness or what not. But I'm going to try to give a little bit about 10 or 15 minutes or so on uh, what we want to begin with, which will take us about five or six weeks to complete. And that is the dooms, the dooms of America, the dooms of the white Caucasian people. Yes, sir. Written and taught by none other than the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Before I start, I wanted to let you know that uh, Minister Hasty last night, I was up with him just about all night. He got shot last night. And uh, people was trying to rob him. Our people. So he's in the uh, hospital, Mount Carmel's hospital. So I was there until 6 o'clock this morning with him. He's doing fine now. It's a shame of our people, of how they are doing each other. He, he was trying to be robbed, but they didn't get it. But they shot him as he ran across the street out of his car. His two daughters fell to the floor in the back of the car. And so he ran to 
move them away from them to follow him. First bullet caught him in his right hand. Went through his right hand. He throwed his hand up, trying to block himself. Otherwise, by moving his head a little bit, it kept from being shot in the head. So he, uh, He uh, went away from the car. They put three bullets in the windshield. Those two missed him. But when he ran across the street, turned the corner, the bullet caught him in his right side. It was raining bullets on Adam. You don't see how he was missed with three men shooting at him. That is a shame for people to do that. For right. our people to do it. Right. Our Lord don't like that. They are in danger of Hell's fire and might have caught it already. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's why that I try to teach unity as the messenger taught it. It's you and I have to stop it. Bush and none of the other bushes can stop what is going on. You and I have to do it. And if we do it, it won't come up anymore. If they do it, it will come up again because they are the devils. A lot of our people that have business or something of the kind, or even don't have business, it can be you as well as him. That's right. They see you walking around thinking that you got some money in your pocket, and that crack and dope or whatever it is, when they get full of it, uh, they'll kill their grandmama for it, for money. It's dangerous. I pray a lot that our people will wake up and love one another instead of trying to take two or three dollars from one. As a bank sets on the corner, go there. That's right. Right. So um, the thing, all of this that you see today happening on the earth between countries and man, good and the bad, working of evil and the workings of good, is showing you today the dooms of a nation of people. It is showing to you today that you and I must return to our own people or take the consequences of the war that is now hitting as the battle of Armageddon, the last war. This is the one that Master Farad taught us and the messenger taught us that shall be the end of the wicked. 
the end of the Caucasian race and the end of those that love them and don't want to leave them, that person shall go with the devil. It is written in the Bible, it is written in the Quran, that if you do not have the mark of the God in the forehead, you will go down with the beast. Some of the Orthodox Muslims claims that the mark in the forehead is from prostrating with the head on the rug. And after so long a time, it leaves a sign in the forehead. They say that is it. That could be it. I never heard the messenger condemn that. But here is what he says. The sign that you will carry is the sign of having Allah within. He knows best. He is the best knower. And he knows those who is uh, Muslims. He knows those who is Buddha, Christians, or any other religion. Right. He knows it. Therefore, today, our ma. is the doing of good to others. That's one of the greatest marks that you can have in your forehead, which is in your mind to do good and be good to self and to others. Master Farad Muhammad said that he came to unite us together that we might see the hereafter. And the hereafter that he's talking about is being here after the destructions of North America. So the messenger, he writes it and tells it in his theology of time. He write it in a book, he says, number four. It is called The Doom. It is also called, or as he says, the judgment is now. We don't have to wait for it. It is now. Again, he says, knowledge of this day and time. What time have you today to wait for something else? when this is the day and the time that you and I should unite ourselves together with our own selves here in America so that we can be able to unite ourselves with our black brothers across the pond in Africa.
I'm going to read a little of this just so that we can straighten ourselves out the next time that I'll be with you so we can continue this subject the doom. Let us quote his reading, his writing, as he began it. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Has there come to thee the news of the overwhelming events? Faces on that day will be downcast, laboring, toiling, entering, burning fire, made to drink from hot, boiling springs. They will have no food but of thorns neither nourishing or satisfying hunger. Faces on that day will be happy, glad for their striving in a lofty garden, wherein a fountain flowing therein of thorns raised high, thorns place of rulership and drinking cups ready placed and cushions set in rows and carpets spread out. See they not the clouds, how they are created and the heavens how it is raised high, and the mountains, how they are fixed. And one place of the Kowan, the mountains are called pegs that is set in the earth by the explosion of high-powered bombs and the earth and it is spread out so remind thou art only one to remind thou art not a water over them but whosoever turns back and disbelieves Allah will chastise him with the greatest chastisement. Surely to us is their return. Then it is for us to call them to account. The dooms, the white race. You cannot love God and his enemy. The messenger writes as in his text here, we have a great time of trouble going on and it's getting worse and worse every hour. Therefore, we should be in Muhammad's temple of Islam to decide on what way we shall take. We should be in Muhammad's temple of Islam so we can decide on what way we shall take. What way shall we take if we is in Muhammad's temple? The way is we shall take the teachings from God Almighty 
and his messenger Elijah Muhammad who is the end of all of the teachings of Islam that shall come to black peoples in America and being the end of that teaching it shall be the end of all religions because it is written in the Quran that tells us Allah has condemned all religions except one and that is his religion and his religion is Islam Brothers and sisters, according to the teachings of Messenger Elijah Muhammad, he says, we have no time to think about trying to correspond with the people of this world. The people of this world is none other than the devils because his time has expired in, in this world, which was given to him 6,000 years to rule. His rulership has expired. Now it is time for God's chosen people to rule. And the only chosen people of God according to the teachings of Master Farad Muhammad in my hearings is you and I. What more can we say or what more can we do? We have got to prove ourselves in order to enter into a new world. Some people have the idea that the new world is that what they call themselves the new world. They have it as if that was it, just them. No, the new world is in the hereafter and you are entering it according to your belief, your actions and your works that you shall lay down before Allah in this present time. Then you make a new world. It is hard for our peoples to turn loose the devil's actions. It is hard for our people to turn loose the Christian religion. Because we thought all the time that that was God's religion. When the same book that was taught to us from tells us that it is not his religion and they claim that Jesus brought it to us. If Jesus had brought it to us, why did he say he did not pray for everybody? He just only prayed for those that was with him. And that's what our preachers of the church in Christian religion should learn today. That they are living in a day of dooms. In a day of judgment. One that nobody can escape if they is of the wicked. None. Regardless to color, creed, religion, or what not. You just cannot escape in this day. It is known because he did not weigh you by just your sayings. Because mere words mean nothing unless carried into practice. It is said there <clears throat> in the book of the Daniels, the Bible tells us that he says, Thou hast been weighed in 
balances and are found wanted. Preachers has taught to us that that was the wicked people that was weighed in balances and God found them wanted. No, that was not those people the messenger has taught us. It is us. What do God want with the wicked people but for destruction? It is us that is found wanted by him. And Master Farad Muhammad taught us that he is the only one that wanted us. Others did not want us. And that was another cause of him to come to America to teach us to unite ourselves together and become a nation of people as the prophets has predicted of us. The messenger continues, says, don't be trying to imitate them. Do not imitate any of them, white people. This is the time of separation and the destructions of one and the safety of another. I don't want you to think that I am putting these words before you for fun and foolishness. Listen. The messenger says I am here like the traffic officer trying to direct you into the right path or lane or road. There is no more time for foolishness. Time has expired. It is time now that every black man in America should unite under one banner, one religion, one leader, and one God. The time is here. I don't say that the time just arrived. He's not saying so. Because the time was right for you and me to take hold of Islam when Master Farad Muhammad put his foot on the American soil. Yes, sir. That's right. He said to us, then, at number one Michigan when there was but one temple and no others and now they're all across the continent. All over the earth as you might say. The whole earth knows Messenger Elijah Muhammad. That's right. That's right. The whole earth. He said the time was right then in 1930. The time is right that you and I must get together and stop foolishness. Stop acting in a foolish manner towards yourself and towards others. This is the day of doom, he says. He's here like a traffic officer. Where there is no light, where there is no stop signs, he stands in that particular place to direct you in what way you should go. He stands there, as Jesus says, I am the door, and no one cometh into the Father except by me. Meaning today says he has passed away in death, 
it means today no one shall enter into the hereafter into the land of promise only but by through Islam the nation of Islam you can't enter it unless you take Elijah Muhammad's teaching that's what it's talking about If you cannot take his teaching, then you are not going to enter. Look at all of the rest of the people today who have teachings of Islam. That's right. That's right. That's right. And they can't get around uh, majoring Elijah Muhammad. Right. Because before 1930, there was no Islam to any black people. They say Noble Drew Ali taught Islam in the 20s. I was going to school when Noble Drew Ali was teaching in the 20s. And he had only a crescent, a black crescent that he would stamp on the card and mail to people. Master Farad Muhammad in the 30s, when he came, he said Noble Ali was only a smeller of Islam. He couldn't teach it all the way, and he just was a smeller. He only learned his ABCs, he says, how to speak a little of the Arabic language. Now remember, you are not Arabs not like these Arabs that you see up and down the street. No. You are not like them. You is the Ab original man, which the A-B Ab of the original means the first. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. According to the Quran, it means the first. According to the messenger, it means the first. According to Master Farad Muhammad, God in person. He says, it means the first. <laughs> now who is this first people? This first people can't be anybody. It got to be one body. One people. And that one people is the so-called American Negroes. That's the way he taught it to us. I don't care what man comes about. I don't care what house he comes out of. I don't care what religion he comes out of. I don't care what nation he is from. He cannot prove that you is not the aboriginal first man on this planet Earth. I don't care what kind of degrees he's got. His highest degree is called doctors, right? Well, you got one little bit higher than that. I won't say a little bit, but a whole lot higher than that. And it's called the degrees in Islam. Even in his doctor's degrees, he does not tell black man who he really is. He can be a PhD or any kind of D's or P's or what not. He does not teach you your righteousness belonging of self. If he did taught you that, he should have given you back your name that he found you in when he brought you here from Africa. Today, you and I, brothers and sisters, is living in a day of doom. In a day when you and I must learn that black 
brother, come on, let's stop all of this, what we doing. Let's stop all of this foolishness that we got out here in the streets. That's right. That's right. right. That's right. Let us join hand together one time and for all that we submit ourselves to the one God who is the best knower and we become brothers in our own nation because we'll never get anything. 400 years have proven that in the nation of the white people, we will not get anything. We haven't got nothing for 400 years. Let's shake hands together, brother, and lock arms and walk together in peace. As the Quran said it, and they shall and they shall speak none other than peace. Peace. In that day. We are living at that time. You and I must come together. Well, I don't like to be a Muslim. That's all right. We asked the other man, what about you, brother? What about you, sister? I don't like it either. That's all right. If you don't want to be a Muslim, what do you want to be, brother and sister? Well, I want to be a Methodist. I want to be a Baptist. I want to be sanctification. I want to be Catholic. That's all right. If you want to be that, go ahead. We're not going to stand to beg you to come and be my brother and my sister in the nation of Islam. No. We have been warned to tell you and warn you, black people, in all of my 50-something years of the teachings that was taught to me in Islam by Master Farad Muhammad for two years and a half. While he was teaching our messenger for three years and a half. Two years and a half of that, I was around him. But he would teach me of the school and whatnot. Not, I had to be able to answer the questions. He didn't teach me to be a messenger to you. He taught me to bring you that. What Elijah Muhammad has given to me, then I bring it to you. Master Farad here. I don't come to white folks to warn them about the dooms. It's you that I want to know about the dooms. Thank all of the white people on the earth that has blue eyes long stringy hair, pale face, and as the Indian says, speak with forked tongues. That's right, 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 right. And the Holy Quran calls him the jinn. Yes, and when we examine the word jinn, we find out that the jinn means devil. And when we find devil, we find that Master Farad Muhammad was truth when he said white folks is the devil. That's right. That's right. Now, God didn't come to warn them. He came to warn us. That time is out. Why he come to warn them for? And here we are, the first and the last. Why would he leave us alone? to go and warn the white folks. Listen at 
<coughs> what the messenger says. The question asked him by Master Farad Muhammad, then can you reform devil? You hear me? Then can you reform devil? <coughs> the messenger says, no. All of the prophets have tried to reform him and could not. So we have agreed we cannot farm him. He must be murdered. We must take him clear off our planet Earth. We can't do nothing with him because he is a devil made in that state by the God himself. Their father Yaqub was a God in his day. He was the God over the white people, though he was a jet black man. But he was the God over the devils. Doing a divine work in the making of these people. Bringing them about so that you could be tested by them. Now if your test that you are in should fail and you said, no, I don't want to be in Islam. I want to be an American Negro. I want to be with white folks. That's all right. Go with them. That's all right. You know what Master Farad Muhammad said to, to the messenger Elijah Muhammad and Captain Galat Muhammad and Secretary John Muhammad, which is me at that time, in Gary, Indiana? He said to us three in the car, sitting there, he said, leave them alone if you desire so, and bring me the key. We only had three temples at that time. That was Detroit, number one. Chicago, number two. Milwaukee, number three. When he said those words, he says, I will fix every last one of them. He says, they shall not get away with it. He says, I will show them that I am not a spook. Which means in this, we who have prayed in this church uh, 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 of Christianity, praying to somebody that is a spirit which does not exist. He's telling us, look at me. I am the God. And I am not a spook. I am not a spirit. I seen him take off his shoes showing to us his feet. So that we would see it. Showing to us his feet because a one question that was asked concerning the man having coins on his toes. He pulled off his shoe and his sock and showed us his feet. Look, does that have anything to do with words of the Bible? Yeah. He said he showed them his feet and said, see my feet? That helms me. That a spirit held no flesh and bones as you see me have. Well, I seen that. Showing us his bare foot. And it was as smooth as any foot you have ever seen a human being have. No coins and calluses nowhere. And told us how to get rid of them. That had them. And it's the most commonest thing that you have ever heard. And that is this. Wash them every day and keep them clean. Right. 
You won't have calluses and coins on your foot. <laughs> I won't talk about the foot now. I am here to not to try to warn any white man because all the prophets have tried. All except Messenger Elijah Muhammad. And he told them their dooms in the prison, in the jailhouse, in people's yard, in people's basements. He told the dooms of white people. And taught us that the other prophets couldn't reform him. Why should he try to reform them? No, we don't try that. So Mr. Bush or Mr. Whosoever they are, don't ever look to John to warn you. You are devils. You can't, if I warn you, and then you try to do what is good, you cannot enter where I shall enter. Well, then, will any white people be saved according to the teaching of Master Farad Muhammad? Will any white people be saved in the day of this judgment of this doom? Yes, there will be some saved. Well, why then did you preach that they're all going to be destroyed? That's right. Which ones will be saved? That one that submit himself to Islam, we will let him live a little while longer by the mercy of God being a merciful God. Now, a little while longer does not mean that we are not going to kill them. We're going to kill him just the same. Well, if he submit, then why should you kill him when the Holy Quran said, he that is submit himself entirely to Allah and is a doer of goods of others, he has his reward from his Lord. Then why are you going to kill him? Well, we did give him a reward. We let him live a few days longer. <laughs> He got it. He still got a reward today because of us. We have given him one by not reclaiming our own. If we had come together and joined into Islam and been ourselves uh, from the time of the messengers teaching all of the black people in America now wearing their uniforms or whatnot, and uh, well, we wouldn't hardly probably would have been here. We could go ask to go back to our own country, give us some boats or give us some airplanes, let us get out of your country, and if he had agreed to that, then uh, we would leave him. He would still live longer. But no, he don't agree to that. He don't want you to go and live back where you brought you from. He's afraid. He won't give you a place to live like they give the Indians, right? Why don't they put you out on reservations? You was a slave. They did worse to you than what they did to the Indians. We don't find where they've been taking Indians at carrying them out someplace, putting ropes around their necks, hanging them up like, like they got this man here by not saying, yes, ma'am, and no, sir. Right. Right. We don't find them doing Indians that way. It is us. Why then would they do us this way? So that we can prove to the whole world, you can't get rid of me. I still arise up and reclaim my nation while right. wow. you stay there. Right. 
So he's here like the traffic cop, the traffic officer, showing to us and telling us today, black man and black woman, unite yourself into your own, get with your own people. Wherever that you see this flag waving here, that is your people. It was given to us. The African flag has did his job. It's over with today. All of the flags today is over with. They have did what they was to do. This is the one now. The universe is coming in. Sun, moon, and star. The universe is coming in. And today we must obey it. Brother and sister, I'm not going to hold you any longer, but since we have opened a doorway to where we want to start at on our next time that I'm here with you, and I pray a lot that we get as many people as we can to hear the dues. At the end of it, I will give that which shall destroy the devil. I will tell you the history of Mother's Plain at the end of it. That is his dooms and he knows it. I taught Mother's Plain in 1300 Bobian in the jailhouse there one Sunday. I was kept hitting at it and uh, well, uh, the, the, where I was at in the, I wasn't in the bullpen as they call it. We had our little stalls there, and it was full about about thirty men. And I taught it right there, and the devil stood there and listened for a while, shake his head. And um, I said it, I told him, I said, you see, he knows if it was, <clears throat> if it was being taught to him, he probably would uh, let you free and he take it. That's right. The devil looked at the other one and walked away and laughed. Right. And Master Farad said they would. He said, if I had came to teach the white people and to save them, he said, you couldn't get in none of the temples. Right, that's right. Because they wouldn't let you. So he didn't come to them. They have asked the messenger. They have asked even me. That's right. <clears throat> Before so many black people become Jehovah Witnesses. Back in 1938, I worked outside on what they call the WPA work, if you've heard of it. There was devils there and uh, this, they owned this church that I don't know where it's still there, but I think it's the building. I think it's still there. It's the last time I was by there on Mac and Van Dyke. Mac and Van Dyke on the right hand corner going east. Uh, that was the place that they offered me while I worked. And they was the Jehovah Witnesses. He heard me teaching a couple of brothers on the job. And he told me, he, after a week he told me, he says, I went home and I found out that what you was telling those men 
he was talking to the other week, he says, uh, would you come to our church and teach it? I said, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, I didn't want to just, you know. So I wanted to see, too, what would he do. He said, you come to our church and teach it. He said, you wouldn't have no bother. He says, I'm one of the hidden men there. He said, we give you everything you want. He said, you wouldn't be working out here like I am. We'll take care of you. Then I had to come right down to it then. I said, well, this teachings that you heard me telling those men <clears throat> is not for white people. It's for black people. He said, couldn't, couldn't we be black? I said, you don't look like it to me. <laughs> Our people don't know what Jehovah Witnesses really means. It wasn't for you. The, man, the founder was not a black man. He was a Scottish and something else. Uh, the pastor Russell. And Judge Rutherford was a straight white man. And those were the two for uh, main men in Jehovah Witnesses. I have their books. They really give white folks down the country. I can't say devil because they're already devil. They really worked on them. So the thing that we must do now is work on our own selves. Tell the people that the door is open. We don't know when it will be closed, but one day it will be closed. Like Master Farad Muhammad said, he says, when it gets so that you can't tell them anything, lock the door and bring me the key. Well, By the virtue of righteousness, he still spares the city. So we must understand today that we have to, if we want to live in a clean world, in a new world, in a new universe, because God won't take this universe for us. If so, he would uh, be a weak God. He will change it into a complete new one. And the messenger says that he had power to change this universe into another one at the twinkling of an eye. That's what it means in the Bible, says that you can uh, be changed at the twinkling of an eye. He would change the whole universe. The messenger taught us that he can take this present universe and roll it up like you roll up your window shade and bring in a total new one and you will never miss the going out of the old one. You could still think so it was something that has been changed, but you didn't know when it was changed. You would even be made change. You would have a change in your life. Then you'll be in the garden where rivers flows. You'll be in palaces with green carpets running up and down in it. Gold bars for your hands to rest upon when you travel up and down the stairs in your own house. Brothers and sisters, this is a day of joy. This is a day to go to heaven if you want to go to heaven. Get on board with me.
and let's go to heaven. If there's anyone here that has not united with us in the nation of Islam, see the secretary after we dismiss and fill out you a, a little small white card. I had one here just now. Fill it out and become in the nation of Islam, believing in the one God, submitting yourself entirely to Allah, and is a doer of good to others. I got it, thank you. Fill this card. If you have not filled one, they are very easy. It says, please register me with the Nation of Islam, Minister John Muhammad's Temple, Number One, Michigan. Male, female, and date. If you're male or female, you know, easy to fill out. Then you put your name, your slave name. If you got an original name and you had one, put it on there. And your address, phone number. You true address and true phone numbers, your occupation of job that you have. If you work for self, say self. If you work at Chrysler, say Chrysler. Or with whomever it might be, you fill it out at that word where it says with whom. The occupation, I'm a spray man, I'm a truck driver, I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, in the place of occupation. With whom? With self, with others or whatnot. From what religion are you from? It says from what religion? I am from the uh, Christian religion. That's all you have to put. You don't have to say Baptist. Methodist, just say Christian religion. That means Protestant, and Protestant covers every bit of those all named Methodists, Presbyterians, and whatnot is covered up when you say Christianity. Because it's Protestant Acts. City of Detroit, it can be New York. It doesn't make any difference if you're living in New York now. But at the present, give the present address. City of Detroit, State, Michigan, and zip number. Get on to your own kind. If you desire so after we dismiss, then you see the secretary and he will show you how to do it. <clears throat> this is your last opportunity. Some people have asked me, says, if you say you are the last one, then uh, how about the messenger? He said he was the last one. That is exactly the truth. He is the last one. And I am the last one. Well, why you say you the last one? you're not going to find another man that will teach the last one's teaching correctly as I teach it. You won't find it. I don't care who he is. I don't care where he's from. He's not going to teach the teaching. Of, he's not teaching the teaching of Islam as I teach it directly from the mouth of God and his servant Elijah Muhammad. Right. I was with them both. I know both of them personally. Elijah Muhammad is my blood brother and my spiritual brother. And the same thing I am to Elijah Muhammad. We have 
I come up with him. I tell you that. I come up with him from the day of birth, of my birth. I came up with him. I have sat on his knee lots of times. Messenger Elijah Muhammad. He have talked with me after his marriage to Sister Clara Muhammad. Many a days and many a times. He have stood in his garage in Chicago and teach me just before that he taken me to the train to come back to Detroit. Some people have asked me, so well, how do you say he taught you so much? And he taught us all the time. I said, well, you see, a lot of time while you were sitting there and he was teaching, you didn't take it. I did. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's why you didn't, wasn't getting taught. And then while that he was teaching you, I am not to sit there and question him. I'd never questioned my brother before other people. And he being the messenger, regardless of what he might say, I didn't jump up before the rest of the brothers and sisters there and ask him, well, what about this or what about that? Uh-uh. That's foolish for me to do. I am his brother. You ask the question. I got plenty of time to ask mine. When you go home, I'll be right there still sitting with him. And then I can ask him what question I wants to know. And I heard your question answered by him. So that makes me get my knowledge and I got yours. That's why he said to me, he says, I have never taught any of the others like I have taught you. Yes, sir. That's right. I'm not bragging. I'm telling you the truth. Right. If the truth bragging, well, I'm bragging. <laughs> Where is it? I got no time to sit down and brag on myself or stand before you to brag on myself. I got plenty of time to do that. After we get into the hereafter, then I can brag and tell you, say, you see what I was telling you is true, that. brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come together. After we dismiss. I'm bringing my talk to a close. Brothers and sisters, be here next Sunday, bring some more. If I don't be here, do the, bring some more just the same. That's right. right. The man that was teaching you, he's sitting here behind me, he's teaching what I taught him. That's right. He never seen the messenger. That's right. Just like probably you never seen him. I taught people that had, had never seen Master Farad, and they lived right around the corner from the temple on Hastings Street. And they never did get a chance to see Master Farad. And Master Farad had come there in the temple, and they wasn't there. That's right. Some saw God, and some didn't. That's right. Many of them seen him, didn't believe it. That's facts. We shall overcome that what we have been up against. May Allah bless you and keep you and give to you your wish. And I pray Allah that he make you the greatest brothers and sisters that has ever been known in the nation of Islam.